There are powerful trends in technologies today, such as artificial intelligence. And when it comes to AI, Ottawa has its own flagship company. This company is more than five years into its mission to bring AI to the accounting world. Today, we talk with the founder of MindBridge, coming up on Techopia Live. <laughs> Hello, I'm Michael Curran. This is a bonus episode of Techopia Live. We're doing some interviews looking back at 2021 and forward to 2022 with some of Ottawa's hottest and most intriguing technology companies. When I think of artificial intelligent companies in Ottawa, I immediately think of MindBridge. Since 2015, MindBridge has been using AI to help its clients reduce the risk of financial fraud and financial errors. 2021 was a big year for MindBridge with leadership changes and expansions in the US. Today, I speak with the company's founder. Please welcome from MindBridge, here is Solon Angel. Welcome, Solon. Hey, Michael, thank you for having us. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy that we get to spend a few minutes uh, talking with this exciting uh, Ottawa-based company. So maybe to, just to, to kick things off, Solon, in your own words, uh, I think everyone knows what MindBridge is, but but give us in your own words a description of the company these days. Well, MindBridge is uh, continuously growing in, and staying true to its mission of you know reducing risk and enabling professionals to find errors and anomalies in financial transactions and financial statements. Um, the platform is really has emerged as being one of the world's leading, leading risk discovery platform. And so what you when you, you think about in the times that we live right now, risk is actually, we're all feeling the day, you know, like the pain of risk every day, you know, with reports of, you know, PPP loans and SERP payments and others, um, you know, being paid sometimes uh, in, in the wrong ways or simply the risk of having lockdowns or not. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that corporations and governments are dealing with these days. And also, you know, the purpose of my bridge uh, of, really helping professional judgment in professions such as auditors, CFOs, and complex professionals has turned out to be very true. The, the hypothesis that we put forth for the creation of this company has turned out, unfortunately, in some cases to be true with cases such as Wirecard and other major financial irregularities that were not caught uh, fast enough. So my wish is that the, the forefront of enhancing audit quality and trust and accuracy in financial statements and in general in financial reporting. And it's very exciting. So the groups, you know, it's an AI company, but I can tell you the success is due to it, the very talented individuals behind the logo. Uh, we would not be here without that team. And do you mind telling us a little bit about how that works? So people are probably getting the concept, you know, it's AI machine language that would do that would do some analysis on financial transactions but maybe take us we're, we're not technologists like you but take us a, a, an inch deeper on that concept sure so if you think about it it's almost like an antivirus on financials right so it was scanned through the books uh, of a corporation or government or a specific database that you pointed at uh, with the the certain parts of the platform that are extensible and basically it will just scan through it and find what is declared to be Anomalous, uh, that is irregularities. The, the, the great thing about MyBridge that we've done early on is to have actual CPAs on staff, have partnered with regulators and have collaborated with universities in embedding the AI with best practices and following the standards in auditing. So in, in layman's term, we take some data from corporations and government, scan through it, applying AI and some best practices and present reports faster, easier, uh, so that the professionals in charge don't have to learn how to deploy machine learning, don't have to learn on how to use AI. And and I wanted uh, to to take you back in time a little bit for a second, Solon. So um, MindBridge, of course, was founded about five six years ago. Uh, of course, you were central to that. What is the give us a sense of how the company's grown over that period, just so people have a sense of the momentum that you're building and how the yeah. products are involved. So. We benefited from something that, you know, I said we're um, 
timing is, if you look at most ventures, timing is really important, right? And so the company was founded a couple of months after Jeff Hinton in Toronto published the white paper on deep learning, uh, which was an inspiration, being very candid about it. And we were able to be first to market but more importantly, first to market with a set of professionals really dedicated and really uh, con you know, convinced that we could make a difference uh, on this world, right? So if you look at the funding team, because it was, you know, yeah, sure, the, there was a guy me for a couple of months, like six months to nine months on my own with a small team, but, but that's really not where things got real. Things got real when the founding team of 15 people, um, actually some of them that are still, uh, most of them are still there, I think, um, the founding team was really convinced that it didn't matter how many times people would tell us it was impossible to do, we would set our sights on making it happen. And so that allowed us to be really focused. And we went through a very rapid phase of expansion, being the first ones to do that. And then COVID happened, right? And we, we basically also went through a phase where the sec not only you need to hit market fit with a venture, but you need to assemble a quality executive leadership team. And this is where our growth was a bit, I would say not, we were not held back, but we did find some challenges when you have a, the big green corporation, everyone knows in Ottawa and others across the tech industry, hiring and having executives. It was hard for us to find executives out of um, Canada and Ottawa that could really fit with the culture and at the same time very quickly help us expand. So. We had that phase of trying, you know, what I call the teenager phase, trying to find the right mix for uh, the team, increase the talent density. And then COVID, when COVID happened, as you can imagine, if your clients are accountants, also then it, 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 the discussion of, uh, you know, buying new tools turns very different. And what happened actually with us, which was very interesting, new initiatives were frozen, but the existing client base like just surged. Everyone that was digitally enabled, that was ready to work with the future of the profession, demanded more of my bridge. So actually we got even busier. Their engineering team was showing us the data and the usage was just increasing on people that were that were already ma uh, mature enough in the process of adopting AI. So we're coming, so that was a very interesting for me uh, experience to witness, right? How a company can start with right timing, needs to focus on talent des density, quality of the executive leadership team, and then when something like COVID happens, I will remember for the rest of my life, the discussion internally, which is, is the world falling on our heads, right? Like, what are we doing? And, and we were very, I was, you know, luckily we had a very supportive board and we had, um, you know, enough, enough runway and good stewardship to make the right decisions. And we're coming out much stronger out of COVID with, as you will see, very big announcement coming soon on the customer front. And I want to ask you about a couple of the big changes uh, that happened in 2021 with MindBridge. But before we do that, uh, Solon, I just want to put you on pause for a second while we recognize the sponsor of this episode, TD Bank. TD's relationship team is committed to your business. They take the time to understand your business and provide banking solutions that can help you achieve your business goals. A dedicated local team allows for deeper customer relationships and better service. They take the time to learn about your business and industry so they can react to changes in the marketplace and anticipate your business's evolving banking needs. Your relationship team can also connect you with other specialists at TD to help move your business forward. And once you're up and running, TD continues to actively manage your relationship, looking for ways to help grow your business. Learn more at tdcommercialbanking.com. We're back with Solon Angel from MindBridge. And Solon, I wanted to ask you about a big change in leadership. You're just referencing kind of some of the the growing pains that MindBridge uh, realized. You have a new CEO in 2021. Yeah. Uh, so tell us about uh, tell us about him. Lee Tom, oh, well, I mean, I hope you'll invite him one day to speak on it. We like, should. Oh, you should definitely. Well, Lee Tom came, you know, with a background just out of um, robot, RPA, Robotic Process Automation Venture that was acquired by Microsoft with a track record of ex excellence in, uh, in sales leadership. And he actually uh, grew within the ranks of MyBridge. He joined us as a chief revenue officer, then very quickly became COO and president. So it was a very uh, interesting transition to have someone really come with the team during COVID remotely. 
is based out, out of the US and basically had, you know, I think it's a very interesting experience for me to see, you know, transition like this from within the ranks and with continuous demonstrated um, action oriented attitude. And Litan also, again, what I was talking earlier about talent density, right? Uh, the, the interesting thing is that right away in the middle of COVID, Litan was able to very quickly put a focus on several initiatives uh, at the same time in terms of, you know, changing some, some of the processes, uh, professionalizing some of the sales processes in particular, but also just a, a different level of, a, of, a, of a focus on the global, um, on the more global scale, right? So, so it, it's great to have a change of leadership because it gives fresh eyes to the venture, right? Like you don't know really when you spend five years into something, four years in something, it's nice sometimes to have new people join the house and make comments and tell you, oh, maybe we should expand that room. Here's maybe what we should add. What about adding this? And this, so this was very interesting to see. And I can tell you like he's made, he's made an impact really fast uh, and beat the odds several times. And as you indicated, he's based in the U.S., I think. And yeah. that's kind of what's followed is a little bit of a U.S. expansion for, for uh, MindBridge. Is that correct? Absolutely. Like, uh, if you look at, so MindBridge is growing by 20%, their headcount. And we had several of, uh, I mean, marketing and sales primarily uh, are right now um, hired out of the U.S., that's excellent. And uh, we're going to wrap up in a minute, Solon. And I know uh, that you've got some news coming, and but there's always lots of confidentiality around these things. So, but give us a little bit of hint as to what we might expect in 2022 uh, from MindBridge. What what type of year do you think it will be? Well, I think it's be a very it's, it's going to be a breakaway year. I think um, MindBridge has, you know, really pro took the COVID time to retool, re-energize, refocus. Uh, made some enhancement and changes. And I think that will speak by the results in the marketplace very soon. People have noticed we actually, it's been a while since we've raised capital um, and we have great optionality offered to us, but we definitely think to double down on what's working uh, very aggressively. And uh, and you'll see that, you know, what we're going to be focusing on is, is just growth and just asserting our, our first mover ad advantage on the global scale, even uh, beyond what people can think of. Well, listen, that that sounds really exciting. That's a that's one of the reasons why MindBridge will be one of our our companies to watch in uh, 2022. That's all the time we have for uh, today, Solon. Thank you very much for spending some time with us, giving some insights on sort of MindBridge and looking a little bit into the crystal ball. So we'll have you back soon, by the way, uh, Solon, to talk about fresh founders. I know that you're very passionate about that too. So Absolutely. bye for now, and we'll see you uh, we'll see you real soon. Thank you for having me, Michael, and thank you from the whole MindBridge team for all the support along the years. Oh, our pleasure. So we're going to, uh, as we wrap up, take a look at some of the other great sponsors behind our Techopia project. Here they are. Techopia is brought to you by many great sponsors, such as Number Crunch, offering virtual CFO services for SaaS companies, Pearlie Robertson Hill & McDougall, a leader in business and technology sector law, TD Bank, specialized programs for technology companies, the University of Ottawa Faculty of Engineering, creating the next generation of technical talent. Techopia is not only a podcast, we post new articles daily at obj.ca slash techopia. If you're on Facebook or Twitter, you can find Techopia at Techopia OTT. And if you're on YouTube, please subscribe and click the bell icon. That wraps up this episode of Techopia Live. I'm Uncle Curran on behalf of all my colleagues at uh, OBJ and Techopia. Thanks for joining us. And a big thanks to MindBridge and Solon Angel. Good luck to them in 2022. I think it's going to be a, a very exciting year. Please uh, stay connected and stay safe. Bye-bye.